Welcome back to the Audio Lag Show. Uh, obviously, I'm real excited to have my next guest here. Um, he uh, did me a huge favor and starred in the movie Beer League with me. Um, and um, when you get a guy who's just kind of famous, you, you get nervous when you're about to shoot a movie with him or he's playing your best friend, because one of two things are going to happen. There's no gray area usually in showbiz. Either they're the biggest jerk-off of all time or they're, like, the nicest guy. And think, Ralph turned out to be the nicest guy, and it was so pleasant. And he's uh, doing the show for us, and uh, I appreciate it. Ralph Macchio. No, oh, thanks. Already, yeah. man, listen, I, that's just the honeymoon period. Now I'm going to really, really <laughs> Let's talk. Let's show talk. my I, true I, colors. How long into the shoot were you just counting the hours? Yeah, just like, <laughs> when am I out? I, I would say... I would Half say, hour after you met Palumbo. Yeah, no, after, no don't, don't blame it all on the sidekick, all right? Don't blame it. You, you are you know, saying, I, been, are you you saying been, I have some issues? Yeah, I maybe, maybe, possibly, possibly. But, uh, yeah, you can't blame it on the sidekick because yeah. you've been there. Right, no, okay? I'm, yeah, yeah. Uh, now that you're the star of the show, um, but uh, I think that uh, once it hit 99 degrees in Jersey in July yeah. was probably when I was counting. And I was in the uh, the honey wagon, that four foot by right, four right. foot uh, tin. Well, it machine. is. You, you do a guy like you to, to do. You really do have to humble yourself because you've been in, like as big a budget movie as you could be, right? Uh, what did you do three Karate Kids? Or... I, I did uh, one four... and a half. I talk about. Oh, okay. Yeah, right, no, yeah. I did do three. I yeah. did do three. I mean, then... listen, no American's gonna turn down three. Come on. <laughs> That's right. I and took... uh, my cousin Vinny, and you yep. know, and uh, outside's working with like you know Francis Ford Coppola and all those things. So it's pressure for me, kind of, because even though I'm the lead of the thing, I'm like. He's not going to tolerate me like screwing up lines or being late, right. and I love being late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are, listen, you are any day with me. You are on great behavior. I got the I got the 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 cream of the crop, the good side of it. I never got the the. Uh, well, you, you know. set that standard too of like you know. Well, I was there like you know I was there they, like, <laughs> eight o'clock call. I was there at six. I knew my line. I knew Artie's line. Now you knew yeah. you knew kind of. Do, uh, since then we haven't really talked a lot. Right. And. Uh, but you always ex express concern for me. <laughs> like, you, you, uh, that's the other thing that was impressive about you is you, you get worried when you meet a real sort of iconic guy because you wonder, did they go the way of Leaf Garrett at all? And you seem to have never had, did you ever have any trouble with a substance? Or, uh, did you no. ever go through any bad times? Like, no, you know? I went through bad times, but never with a substance. No dead hookers in a no, hotel no room? No dead hookers <laughs> in a hotel room uh, that I would bring up. Today. How did you avoid that? No, it just wasn't your personality. It was, I gotta, I guess I gotta do a little of the, the lame blaming it, blame it on my parents. It's a little bit my makeup, right. too. I just think I'm too neurotic and too much of a control freak yeah, it's a good to thing. be that far out of control. Right. Um, and, uh, and I I had a pretty grounded upbringing, so I, you know, I blame it on uh, it's their fault. Yeah. Um, and but but um, uh, you know, one thing you did say to me, I, I'll never forget it. You said uh, I don't know if you wrote this, or I think you said it to me, and then you signed it to me. Uh. Uh, so give you credit. You said uh, having you in this movie makes it feel like I'm really making a movie. Yeah. No. You're exactly. So yeah. That was very very cool. I so. think I signed it and, and said I can't come up with great stuff like that all the time. <laughs> I, I don't know. But I, I, there was a did. team of there was a team of writers that came. Put it this way. <laughs> you delivered it great. <laughs> I punched it up. Yeah, Put it did. this way, Ralph. What I'll say about that is we we had written the movie movie four years before we started to shoot it. Uh, and I couldn't get the money until I got on Howard. We started, me and Frank Sebastiano started, who directed it, started writing it before I got on Howard. So after four years of trying to get a movie made, to see you on the set was like, wow, right. it's happening, you know? It and was, it listen, it, it's so hard. You know, people don't know. They hear it. You know, we hear it all the time, right. and we know how hard it is to get any project up and going, be it film, television, or whatever. Yeah. But it really, uh, four years is, uh, it's uh, sad to say, is a short period of time. I know. From, from blank piece of paper to, you know, right. to getting it done and getting the financing and get, getting it up. And, uh, I mean, I run into people, I got to say, I run into people... All the time, mainly East Coast, not so much maybe in mid Arizona. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, but but uh, that that you know, it's like the holy grail. It's yeah. like when's Beer League two? <laughs> when when an executive? <laughs> or how's Artie? Yeah, right, exactly. That's all. <laughs> one about. one of the two. Do comments. they think you know that? Like, <laughs> <They what>? <laughs> <laughs> I say he's got a show. I don't have a show. <laughs> so funny. Yeah, he considered doing heroin. <laughs> That's right. No, but you were always very concerned about me. But, um, yeah. Even when we were doing the movie, when I was on best behavior to do the movie. Uh, I uh, I stopped drinking for the movie. Mm -hmm. Well, let me rephrase. I stopped drinking in front of people. Right. Yeah. But, uh, no, you, uh, you were always concerned. And I always thought to myself, all the stuff that happened in my life after that, I, I sometimes I would think of you in rehab and stuff going, what is Ralph thinking? What is Macho? <laughs> Maybe this is the phone a friend. 
<laughs> I could have been the phone a friend. No, I will say this much. Um, I think you're insanely talented. Uh. And, and uh, you know, I was on the fence uh, even going into the beer league audition um, just because I didn't know enough about everybody involved. Right. And sort of meeting you and reading with you, I just felt that, and my favorite stuff about that movie with you are some of those scenes with uh, Kara. God, yeah, Kara Blano, yeah. Yes. That were that were completely genuine right. and vulnerable, and I think that part of you is what was my favorite stuff in the movie. The comic side of you right. I, is, you know, is, is your talent. Was, I tell you, we 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 lucked out with that cast, man, because it was Seymour Cassell. That, yeah, the, Seymour I mean, everything correct. he did was like a home yeah, run. Yeah, the, no, you right. know, and uh, there was not a piece of scenery left. It did not have <laughs> teeth marks in it. I want none of your greasy Italians touching my water bottle. <laughs> That's right. Uh, and uh, yeah, everything joke you gave him, but it was and it was like when it was five. Five straight weeks of, um, you know, Frank Sebastiano said this. I, I was all nervous because I the, my schedule was going to be doing the Stern show in the morning, going to right. The, and uh, Frank just said, "Look, we're, this is going to be the summer we shot beer league. Just think of it that way." And I, I think back finally, and I'm proud of the movie. When it's we, good, we, people man. bring it up, they usually say nice things. Yeah, they do, and they did, and it's got its core. You know, it's cult core, but these yeah. guys, guys have watched. They recite lines to me, not unlike that's how they hilarious. recite yeah. uh, lines from, you know, like you mentioned, my cousin Vinny or the yeah, Karate yeah, Kid, yeah. the Outsiders. But, well, my uh, cousin Vinny, you talk about it. People, you know, remember the Karate Kid stuff and everything, but my cousin Vinny is an iconic comedy. It's a fun. It, it's one of the best. One of the best American comedies ever written. Yeah. Now, what it was really it? is funny. What was it like, like working with Pesci in that and, and Marissa Tomei? That was kind of a magical thing, and and you had your relationship with him, and it all worked great. Like, yeah. what, what was? What, did you know Pesci before that? I did. I met him a handful of times. Uh, I'd seen Raging Bull seven thousand yeah, times yeah. by then. A big De Niro fan growing up, and I got to work with De Niro on Broadway. In a wow, play. what did you do with him? I don't it know. It was a play. It was at the Public Theater uh, called Cubanus Teddy Bear. It was Bert Young. It was De Niro and I, father son. Bert Young. Oh, I remember hearing about that. It yeah. was in 86. We went up to the Long Acre Theater on Broadway, uh -huh. and it was... It you, was Bert killing. Young, and De Niro. Me, Bert Young, De Niro, and the Mets won the World Series. So, okay, right. <laughs> you now. did a play with Bert Young and De Niro and never had a drug problem. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> or a drinking problem. <laughs> that's, that's a... Wow, so you've, you've done everything, I've done right? everything. I've sidestepped it all. So you but, you're not intimidated by Pesci, but it's like he's no, a, but he he's a come, force. He is a force. Yeah. And he came around a, a couple of times, uh... And then when My Cousin Vinny came up, you know, people think My Cousin Vinny was an easy get for me, but it was not. I was just, sure it wasn't. I was just falling off the, if I was on the A-list, I was on the sort of the downside of it right. at that quick time. I was, I remember they were looking for Ben Stiller and Will Smith to play the two kids. Oh, wow. You know, a Jew and, a, and a, right. an African-American like the light beer, It's like the light beer commercial. Right, exactly. All those guys hang out together. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> And uh, and in I was South. and I went in the South, so yeah. it's a totally different movie. Well, because the kid is the kid in the movie Jewish, are you Jewish and Italian, Jewish right? Okay, Italian. okay. So um, uh, anyway, but uh, so it was a tough get for that that movie. Joe had Joe was just coming off. Uh, Goodfellas wasn't out yet, I think, but the uh, might have been. Right. Um, and uh, and so and Marissa was uh, you know. She was not certainly on the studio list by any stretch. That she was her a, coming out party. That was yeah, her yeah, coming yeah. out party. But for me, it was a it was a tough get. The studio didn't want me for the part to play, you know, the Italian college kid with, with Joe Pesci, was my cousin Vinny. Uh, so it was it was the beginning of, for me, it was the beginning of, wow, this is not Now I got to fight for stuff, yeah, right. I'm not, not getting offers. I got to fight, right. Yeah. Exactly. But... Uh, Joe was always great with me, my family, and... Uh, did you have a read-through for that movie? Then? Was it, like, insanely... Like, did you no, know? nobody was there at uh, once. I oh, mean, okay. we had a couple of days of rehearsal with me, uh, Marissa... Uh, me, Joe, and, and Mitchell Whitfield, who played the other kid. But Joe, Joe didn't like to rehearse. Right. I love to rehearse. You know, right, I like... Right, right, I yeah. think the... Uh, you know, I really... Uh, I don't know if it's just the theater background, or I just... I just... Uh, surprises... You know, I don't know. You know, <laughs> well, I told Frank. Are we on live TV well, right now. <laughs> I told I told Frank Sebastiano that too, the director, and he said. Uh Art, are you going to rehearse? I said, it depends on who's asking. Yeah. <laughs> if Ralph asks, I guess I rehearse. Yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, you know. Uh, but, uh, well, yeah, again, it... Um, and also, I think America has a relationship with you, in a way. That, yeah. Not a lot of people have that, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I think it's... Um, it's interesting. As I get younger, and I try, I try. Um, <laughs> no, you do. I mean, I look like I'm a couple years younger. Than you. I look like your great uncle. No, not, 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 not quite. <laughs> Just maybe my uncle. Maybe my uncle. But um, uh, what was your question? No, I'm sorry, how, what is it's it late like for me, no, man? Like it's people, late. How do people react to you on oh, the street? Well, what happens with me? Because you mentioned. Uh, 
uh, I've I've become part of everybody's childhood, you right. know, upbringing. definitely, yeah. And so, so it's a it's a sort of it's sort of a burden and a responsibility, but something I embrace. I might not have embraced it as much ten years ago as I do now, right? You know, uh, because you, I mean, you could you'd sign up for that any day if you could represent a positive part of somebody's right. life. Right, oh, yeah, definitely. Way. And yeah. The, the character, certainly the Karate Kid, and, and The Outsiders, you know, that's a book that's, that's read in That's an enormous thing. Yeah. You know, uh, that, that shapes, you know, shapes kids and literature and shapes, you know, uh, a, a child of a single parent, which Karate Kid is classic, and, and it has all those very human characteristics where you play... The every kid, where I got to play the every kid next door. Mm -hmm. So in that respect, I think when I meet people, they feel, and I also I'm not I'm a pretty decently easy guy to talk. Yeah, to. Yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, yeah. You get away. <laughs> I'm sort of embracing of right. it. So I think it. Uh, the downside is they, you know, literally don't want to stop talking. Well, I know. It happens. <laughs> you know, yeah. because I'm, right. I'm so affable, I kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least uh, with me, they want me to sign their Vicodin prescription. <laughs> that's right. Uh, that, well, you. Uh, th that's the thing. I mean, I think the bigger they are. I also worked with Brooke Shields once, and right. she could not have been nicer. Mm -hmm. And I think the longer you're a star, uh, a lot of people they they know how to handle themselves with people. Right. And uh, but the less famous people have attitudes, and you just want to strangle right. them, you know. Yeah. The, yeah, they're, they're prima donnas, you yeah. know. It comes uh, a little too quick. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. What about working with Coppola around the outside? That's an interesting time in his career. Ten, yeah. ten years after The Godfather, he's going through a lull, you know. Yeah, well, he, he just, lost all his money with a, <clears throat> Apocalypse one Now, the, and one from the heart, or was one, it, one from the wallet, as they call it. Was did Apocalypse? <clears throat> was, what was? How far after Apocalypse Now was The Outsiders? Apocalypse was, was his probably next movie? 80. No, no, no. One from no? the Heart. Oh, was okay. The, One from the Heart was the movie he made where he built Vegas. And a huge bomb. Uh, and it was a huge bomb. Right. I, I like the film very much. Great score of Tom Waits and Crystal Gale. Can't great, beat that. Yeah. It was great, great score. And uh, it was Terry Garr and Freddie Forrest. Yeah. At that time, you right. know. And but but that film. Uh, tanked, and he was. It was coming out, and he was casting the Outsiders at the time. And the Outsiders is one of those. I'll never forget that audition. It's infamous, famous, and infamous at the same time. It was. It's never been done before. He would have. It was Zotrope Studios, which was Coppola's studio right. at the time, which he hadn't lost yet. He was bleeding money, though. It's like a really, really weird yes. time in his life. It was yeah. a very weird time. I mean, Apocalypse did him in, and, and One from the Heart just. But so then he wanted to make the two quickest movies that appeal to young people. Right. So he he did uh, the Outsiders, and Rumblefish. Oh right, right and uh, right. That's right. You yeah. know, um, uh, Stuart Copeland did uh, the music in uh, in Rumblefish. Very cool, black and white. Mickey yeah, Roy, yeah, Matt yeah. Dillon. But anyway, so. So the Outsiders was about everybody in town wanted to be uh, in that movie. I well, mean, that I, cast I, read, is insane. I read it right. when I was twelve, right. and I wanted to be that part. So mm -hmm. that was that was one that and the De Niro play were the two sort of pinnacle dream come trues of that time for right, me. Right, right. And uh, so we all that audition process with the Outsiders. He had all the actors in Hollywood. That's why I wanted to ask you though. In one room. The watching each okay, other. Okay, but the guys in that movie that ended up being in the movie, was there ever a part in the audition where everyone who got the movie, from Tom Cruise to C. Thomas Howell, you right. were all together in the room uh, reading and, and, you know... Auditioning, changing roles, like, like a theater wow. workshop. And it was tough because you're watching Francis... You know, every reaction he made, he's like, oh, he liked that. You know, mm. so now you're tailoring your performance. It's really not the best way. It's not. But for him, at that point, he had he had a table full of teen magazines and whoever. I mean, anybody was in there from, you know, from Mickey Rourke to uh, to Scott Baio wow. to, you know, Cruz and, and, uh, and Timothy Hutton and... Um, you know, and Dennis Quaid. I mean, that room was just, it was a revolving door of everyone wanted to be in this movie. And, uh, you know, and I wanted, I think I have, I think they did a workshop of it. I think Downey Jr., who I've known for years, the first movie I ever did, his dad directed. Oh, oh yeah, right, um, yeah. We call Up the Academy. That one I don't put at the top. I remember of that. Yeah, <laughs> that was one of the first HBO movies. That's right, yeah. exactly. <laughs> Um, I think I think Downey Jr. played the, did the role of Johnny in the the workshop. But that's a oh really? Yeah. See, that's a great example though. No. Uh, you're close with Robert Downey Jr. 
the other end of the spectrum of, right, of like right, what happened. Right, you know, right. what do you think? What, what is it? Just the personality of the person? Of what? What? what why? I like went why this way he's like, you know did well, nine months for well, I mean, he for grew, uh, having a hooker in a room with a Wonder I, Woman I outfit. And, exactly. <laughs> and you're taking your kids for ice cream. That's right. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> after stopping at the Home Depot. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> after the concert. I, I, well, you hit it. It's parents. I think no, it's parents. Listen, his father started smoking weed. His dad was doing blow. From day one with him. and on the set with <laughs> right, him right. at thirteen. Yeah, that hurts. <laughs> he, you know, so there, there, therein lies part of that problem. Now, but, are uh, you still but, close with him? But no, I, I know him over the years. Right. It's an acquaintance. He is just supremely talented yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he was uh, from when he was thirteen, and he's a phenomenal right actor. actor. Yeah. Phenomenal actor. Well, th how long? How many auditions did you go on for The Outsiders? How hard was that to get? I just went. It was two consecutive days. And but I. So it was, it was harder to get beer league. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's what. Yeah. You know, I guess it was. It was tougher to get beer league. Last time we saw Artie, he was at the Port Authority. That's Can you right. wait? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> nah, yeah. um, it was two consecutive days, and then they they went to New York. They brought a bunch of guys. I think Emilio and. And, oh, yeah, Emilio uh, Estevez. Emilio Estevez. Yeah, yeah. They all went to New York. That's when Matt Patrick Dillon, Swayze, right? Yeah, yeah, Patrick Swayze and Matt Dillon. They picked up in New York. Matt Dillon. And when uh, um, and I wasn't brought to New York, and I heard that, I was like, "Oh, I'm out." Right. And then I met Francis, uh, you know, in Tulsa when we went to shoot it. I said, "How come I didn't go to New York?" He said, "Oh, we had you figured out by then." Oh, I said, okay. Well, someone couldn't have given made a call. It's yeah, been like yeah. three weeks. You're stressing. I'm walking back and forth. So okay, you just mentioned Swayze. Matt Dillon, you, Cruz, did you guys while you were shooting in Tulsa ever go to like uh, a Hooters and see how many women you could buy? <laughs> uh, that's what I did. <laughs> <laughs> that was your vice. We left Diane Lane that at home. <laughs> that, that, <laughs> Diane Lane was in it. Yeah. She's, yeah. she's adorable yeah. now. Rob Lowe is in it too. I never had a situation where I wanted to bang Superman's mom. That's right. Oh <laughs> Diane Lane. You're talking is, to now Superman. Yeah, dude. Diane Lane was always sexy. That's yeah, right. I forgot she, she's in that. Yeah, she's fantastic. But that crew at like Oklahoma great. State frat party could do some damage. It was the uh, it was the sixth floor of the Tulsa Excelsior Hotel. Wow. It was uh, it was <laughs> I never forget because we did a, an article years later about you know uh, all the, the the happenings up there. Who was who? I mean, every Friday I think it was every Friday we had what was case parties at the time, whoever bought the case of beer, and we'd just sit there and drink, and then we'd go to the, uh, you know, whatever the uh, the high school football game was at the time. Right. I also remember this. You guys would go to a high school football game. <laughs> yeah, because we were like, you know. All, all now, did Tom Cruise stay back and read Dianetics? Or Tom, no, no, Tom Cruise, here, I'll say this much. Tom Cruise is right next to me. Right. And it was his room. His Cruise was next to mine. Dylan was down the hallway. Uh, Rob Lowe was around the on the other side of the elevator. It's just crazy. That's a damaging it's crew. Crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. And but, Coppola is the guy in charge. And Coppola is in charge. <laughs> I mean, Coppola's at some mansion down in Tulsa. <laughs> and no, I think that. Uh, and interestingly, Coppola would give the greasers, you know, the right. room on the sixth floor, and the Soches, the yeah, Leif yeah, Garrett yeah. guys, they all had like the big rooms. He liked the, to keep it separate. Yeah, he oh, wanted huh. to keep us, you know, like down down uh, on the lower level. But I never forget, I got. One day I got, there was a script outside of Cruz's room. He said, they're going to be dropping off a script. It's my next movie. Uh -huh. um, and I, I, you know, he said, he said, just put it in my room or whatever. And I did. And I took a look at it. It said, Risky Business. Oh, wow. I really? said, God, I should have freaking <laughs> taken that. <laughs> should. I should have just taken my, you know, got down to my underwears and slid around with my socks on. Would have taken a whole different That's a great trajectory. show business story, though. Yeah. That is like... Uh, but oh my God, when you think about that crew of guys, they're all all young too. Yeah, and I mean, yeah, we were all just. I mean, I think that uh, Matt Dillon had um, what did he have? Uh, my bodyguard by then. Right, right, right. Cruz was in Taps, but he was just like you know, he was the psycho. Yeah, guy, he, was, you know? he was up and coming. And yeah. uh, we were all pretty green. Uh, you know, everybody had their day in the sun after that. Yeah, for sure. Anyone bang Diane Lane? I'm not going <laughs> to. You see, see, you see, Leif Garrett would have told me. That's how classy he is. He wouldn't know where he is. Right By the way, now. this kind of guy, Ralph, is, he won't tell me that off the air either. I've got to take a break. Uh, and, uh, yeah, we're having fun. The great Ralph Macho's here. I appreciate it. Uh, back after this. The Artie Lang Show. Weeknights on Audience. Only on DirecTV.